this is Legal Perspective. My name is Olusegun Omobamibo. Legal Perspective is a program designed to educate you on salient issues in law. And today we'll be considering the legal remedies to industrial actions in Nigeria. Industrial action has been given life to by virtue of section 40 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended. But I want to talk about industrial actions. Are there remedies to it? Are there more effective approach to industrial action? Doing justice to this, I have with me today Mr. Vincent Okaye, a legal practitioner by excellence. Mr. Vincent, you're welcome. Thank you. It's nice being here. Yes. I um, want to talk about uh, section 40 of the constitution that uh, gives life to industrial action. Can you just educate us what exactly is industrial action by virtue of that provision? Okay, thank you very much. Um, to begin, we would need to know exactly what industrial action means. And um, industrial action is what is commonly known among Nigerians as strike. Uh, there is no generally acceptable uh, definition of the word strike or industrial action, but there have been a plethora of definitions. Um, the Trade Dispute Act, the Trade Union Act, and even some other online sources have defined the term strike. But let's narrow ourselves to a more um, all-encompassing definition, which is what we have in the Trade Dispute Act. Now, simply put, straight dis um, sorry, uh, industrial action is simply the cessation of work, a disruption of work, a point where employees decide to come together through a concerted effort and put to stop their services to their employers. However, with the intention of pressing down demands which are for the common good of the employees. Now, it is, it is unfortunate that most times some persons uh, mismatch the word strike and protest or industrial action vis-a-vis -vis protest. Now, these are two different things. Whereas a strike action or an industrial action can, can, be, can result to a stoppage of work. Now, protest does not really demand that you stop your respective services in your place of employment. So I think we'll stop at this stage just to get an opening to it. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Vincent. Thank you. Um, given its very nature and the manner in which um, this industrial action is being carried out in the country today, could it be said in the strict sense of it that uh, it is legal? Well, uh, industrial action today there have been lots of arguments on ground. It's one major area that is worth debating about. And personally, I did the studies on because um, I did labor law to an extent, and at least I have a good grasp of what industrial action means and its legality or otherwise. You you see, if you peruse through the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and some other enactments. I beg your pardon, you will discover that there is no clear provision for the legality of an industrial action. But then, you will discover that industrial action seems to be the only way and medium through which some employees press down their demands peacefully. Now, if we want to look at the legality or otherwise of industrial actions, uh, it is expedient that we look at uh, some authorities and the opinion of some experts that have been on ground for some time. Now, in the words of Lord Denning, when deciding a common law, now, industrial action was never and is never legal. Because in the UK, for instance, or in the United States, you know, when you are employed, it is a contract of employment. And if an employee fails to discharge his duties to the employer, he falls in breach of that contract. So there is no legality attached to it. 
but then now coming back home to Nigeria there are some certain decrees that were made all, all I think all the way from 1967 and then 1976 during the military regime now some promulgations were made and in them there was no clear provision for the legality of strike or industrial action in Nigeria but then there was a decree that was made during the military regime in 1976 to be precise then it it attempted to make a slight provision that permitted industrial action although not exclusively because even with the provision there were some limitations such as the resilience conditions and uh, um, 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 do, I, do I call them yes conditions that the employees need to meet before they can embark on an industrial action so but then we would look at those provisions briefly although we will not be going too deep like we have for example we have the trade union acts the trade union act for example provides that employees are entitled to come together and press their demands voluntarily provided they are pressing their demands home for the common good and the welfare of all and also provided it is done in a peaceful manner but then there are some conditions if you go down to section 18 of the trade dispute act there are conditions that are laid down and so one among those conditions which actually i'm not so comfortable with is the fact that a, a, a vote of a majority has to be arrived at and then if it is not arrived at that means they are not qualified to embark on that industrial action now another requirement in section 18 is that a notice of 15 days has to be given to the employer before they can go on such a strike now if you take a close x-ray on these authorities and these provisions you will discover that the government never made any provision for the legality of strike or industrial action but then if we go to section 40 of the constitution if you look at the provision it provides for the freedom of association it provides that an individual, a citizen of Nigeria, is qualified to associate with any group and then he is free to express himself in that group. Now, if, let's look at this together, if the constitution in section 40 has made provision for freedom of association, now it is incidental that upon association there is going to be a union and then upon a union there is going to be a common goal and where there is a common goal, it is imperative and it is incidental that these persons are going to put on concerted efforts to fight for their common needs so we cannot why we cannot expressly say industrial action is legal in nigeria we can also technically say technically say it is permissible so if we go by the wordings of section 40 which is to which to an extent is not in agreement and a, um, in alliance with the provisions of the trade dispute act the trade unions act and some other uh, uh, enactments that are made during the military degree and uh, military regime you would discover that the constitution is the ground norm and it is the, so, the, 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 the supreme law of the land and as such it is to be given priority so where yeah, the constitution has provided that okay unions and organizations are permitted to embark on industrial actions however subjects to some conditions and you cannot you, you cannot you cannot put it behind bars and then bury it down and then give priority to some other enactments that have totally banned the act of act of industrial action thank you thank you mr vincent um from your exposition suffice it to say that industrial action they say is not illegal in nigeria very well, very well. but then again so far so good over the years i could remember that back then in the university days also we go on strike for months sometimes years um we are still experiencing it i think a case study is that of the doctors medical doctors they are still on it now now has industrial action been effective so far or is just um, a yearly festival in futility uh, personally um looking at the futility or otherwise of industrial actions 
I want to say technically yes, it's been futile, and technically it has not been futile. Now I will I will I will end on braids. Now I I recall back then in the university, there were times when we were thrown out of school because ASU had to go on strike. Now they had to come back into the four walls of the classroom only because the government was able to meet up with a degree of their demands. And when they came back to classroom, that was what gave birth to most of us graduating from the university. So we cannot say, from that perspective, we cannot say that industrial action has been futile. Now let's also look at the juicing. They wouldn't have come back to offices if the government had not met a degree of their demand because I know the government of, the, of, of Nigeria cannot in totality absolutely grant your demands. I can also look at um, personally there are, there, are, there are instances where I have now whether you like it or not as individuals we may have been involved in industrial action directly or indirectly. Personally there was a time I you know implemented I, I had to go, go on something like that in a small union and it paid off. So I will not say that it has been futile because we haven't seen results. I believe it is one of the most effective tools to communicate to the government because you and I will know that the country today there is no way we can say between the employer and the employee there is an equal bargaining power. No. The employers are always the supreme and then we are like the lesser ones. So when we, we the only way we can get our hearts communicated to them and press down our demands is through, is through industrial actions. So it has not been futile. Um, thank you, Mr. Vincent. Um, now, looking at it, we know that uh, industrial action um, is a situation whereby the government will you know, concede a little bit today. Tomorrow you see that they are embarking on the same you know, process to fight for the same thing, to be asking for the same thing. Now, we want to consider some of these better alternatives solutions that we can adopt in order to dispense with the need for an industrial action and the reason for this is that take f uh, for instance take the take ASU for instance a lot of students suffer a lot there's a delay in their program it has a lot of disadvantages what are the alternatives that we can explore in order to dispense with industrial actions in Nigeria. Okay, we well there are there are there are plethora of alternatives we can actually explore. First, to begin with, one major one major appeal that you and I as Nigerians are supposed to make is that above all, God gives this nation patriotic leaders and um, of course patriotic citizens at large because it takes patriotism for a country to be able to hold its ground norm its constitution in high esteem i know the constitution of nigeria gives sovereignty to the people so if they can understand if the nation at large can understand that these people are sovereign then you you have no other choice but to give sacrosanct to the constitution of Nigeria. So let's explore some of those remedy, alter, alternatives um, that we can actually uh, consider instead of industrial actions. Now there is a court that is special in its jurisdiction, the National Industrial Court. Now most people, it's quite unfortunate that they, they have not come to understand the, 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 the how to exploit the benefits of the National Industrial Court. Well probably some people have not been able to do that because of uh, uh, um, um, pecuniary um, implications so we would not really blame them at that now the national industrial court is there with a special jurisdiction to determine matters arising from employments and a host of other jurisdictions attached to it though so I, I think one of the most effective ways that we can reach out to the government instead of going on industrial action all the time is to seek redress in courts now the National Industrial Court is there. Once you have a claim, once you have a, a, a valid course of action, the court is there to expeditiously de determine your case. And then at the end of the day, if from the preponderance of evidence it, it falls in your favor, there are lots of remedies out there, injunctions are there. 
you know there, there, there are garnishy orders they are there you know there are specific performance that the court can order that okay you must do this as an employer you must do this to your employee now if we can but come to understand how to exploit the jurisdiction of the national industrial court then we we'll understand that national uh, 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 industrial action is not the only way out of a failing government well thank you mr vincent um we we'll would love to continue today but for constraints of time we are going to be bringing this program to an end today but when next we will be coming we would like to invite you once again and um we want to take a holistic look at the issue of a uh, national industrial cause because uh, understanding you better what you're saying is that um, uh, a, a, a court action could serve as an alternative to industrial actions in nigeria and we know for a fact that of course there are so many remedies when it comes to courts. There is a writ of FIFA, there is a writ of sequestration, yes. there are garnishy orders and all of those things. These are some of the things that can be used and they are available. So when next we come back, we are going to be taking a detailed look and a concise look at the application and the implication of some of these uh, pro uh, processes. So thank you once again for being with us today. We are very, very grateful. We hope that to see you next week. Thank you. Same thank time. You. Thank you so much. And thank you, our viewers at home. Uh, once again, my name is Ulushe Gumwamobamibo, and I am your regular host on a Legal Perspective. Um, we would like to meet you same time next week on this program. Until um, then, I want to say to you know your rights and stand for it. Thank you. <laughs>